Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Profit Tool Belt Podcast. Very glad you're here. Hey, do you see that picture up above me here? If you're looking at this on YouTube, that's art that my daughter painted. She's an insanely good artist, and I'm so proud of her. So I, you know, so, so that she has a paid installation. She, uh, I actually lease her art on a monthly basis, and it rotates through my office. So you'll always see new art behind me on screen. I hope you enjoy that. Listen, today we're doing something very different. We're going to uh, open the kimono, if that doesn't make you shocked and reeling back in disgust. It's not actually my kimono we're opening. We're going to go back behind the curtain of Oz. I want to show you what it is that I do when I say I coach companies. What, is, what does that actually look like? And so the title of today's show is How to 10 Times Your Results. How to 10 Times Your Results by Reinventing the Business While You're Still Running the Thing. How to 10 Times Those Results. And it's possible. So when you when you see people come on um, and they say, well, I worked with Dom and his team and this is what happened, I'm going to show you how we did it. I know that's pretty rare and it might be a little too much info for some of you, and, but if you're curious, I wanted to record this because we get this question so much. How does coaching work, Dom? And it's okay if you've never used a business coach before. That's a legitimate question. How does it work? Anyways, would it work for me? Does it work right for my industry? Does it work here or does it work there? And why did, wouldn't it work over somewhere else? So we're going to dig into all that today. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. And we'll see you on the other side. Hey, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about something a little different than we've talked about before. I'm going to be putting it all together. You know, when we do these episodes, I have guests and a guest is going to be an expert. Let's say they're a builder, a general contractor or a renovator or a cabinet maker or um, a roofer. You know, we have great guests on the show, and I appreciate everybody who's joined us to share their experiences. And then I've got segments throughout the show where I'm pulling out questions that you've asked and answering those. And one of the challenges that I've heard back from you guys is, but how do I put it all together? Where do I start? And that's an important question. And it's funny, but you start at the beginning. But even that doesn't really answer the question, does it? So what I've decided to do today is I'm going to be recording an episode that is good for anybody who wants to understand where do I start? How do, you know, what do I do first? What do I ignore? All of those things. When you're thinking about changing your business for the better, for making your business more than it is today. And let's make no mistake, you're doing a great job running your business now, but the challenge or the, the frustration or the stress that you're feeling probably comes because you're running a business at today's level, but you're using yesterday's systems or processes. And that's why it's coming apart at the seams. It's you know, fluttering at the edges. And so that question then becomes, well, how do I change that? What's the next level? People talk about, hey, we want to get to the next level. It's really time for us to get to the next level. Or uh, I'll hear something like, Dom, I didn't really care for a long time. And then I realized I can do so much more with this company. And so the people that want to reinvent those businesses, the people that want to rebuild their business from the inside while they're still running it and still get home in time to have dinner with their family, have questions. And those are the people that usually contact me and the people that listen to the show because you're not alone in listening to the show. So today's episode is going to be called How to, How to 10X Your Results by Reinventing the Business. And what does 10X mean? Well, it's how to 10 times your results. You want 10 times more uh, time off? Do you want 10 times more profits? Do you want 10 times more sales? Do you want a team that's 10 times better than it is today? Because I have found over the years that that's what I'm able to show people how to do. And you see lots of uh, case studies and stories uh, that you've seen on the website that you've seen in various other places of clients who've done exactly that. I can, I, this sounds, it sounds too good to be true. When I say I was uh, I met a company when we first started, they were doing one, 1 1.2 million. And here we are a couple of years later and they're at 3 million and profitable. And when I say a couple of years, I'm talking like not a year, but not two years. So like 20 months later, 22 months later, we've more than doubled their business, but their profitability has come along with it from being not profitable to being wildly profitable wildly profitable. You know, I, I do want to point this out. And I know this is a little bit of a side conversation. And you know how I like my side conversations. When you hear from your accountant or a friend of yours, hey, most businesses make 10% net profit, 10% take home. 
Most people do that is one way of saying it. Most people don't. But then the people that make more than 10% don't make 11%. Does that make sense? So there's people who don't even make 10% profit. For those, I, I hope and I pray for you and keep listening to the show. We'll get you there. There's people who make 10% and think, oh, we're doing pretty good. We're making 10% profit. And then there's a bunch of you laughing right now going, uh, we make way more than 10% net profit. And here's how we did it. And those people are my clients. And they're listening to the show right now. So I want to talk to you about what I do and what my team does and how you can do it too. So um, if you enjoy this show, make sure you leave a review afterwards for what I'm about to drop because I, wanted, I want this to be a big deal as an episode. Um, all right. So here's what it looks like if you decide to reinvent your business from the inside while you're still running it. The first thing you have to do is decide. Now, if you decide on your own and you want to take the rest of this episode as the action items, that's great. But if you decide in this episode, you want to reach out to me and my team and find out more, then the first thing we would do is we'd start by having a meeting to listen and understand what it is you really, really want. And you know, what's crazy is you may never have been asked that question before. You might not have ever had the chance to answer the question, what do you really want? You know, I think of people that I've worked with in the past who say to me, uh, you know, Dom, I've been a roofer or I went into cabinetry as an apprentice. And then I just kept working at it. And suddenly I found myself the owner of a company and I've never really stopped to think about what I want. I just want to grow. I just want to be better. I want more. Okay. But what does that look like? What do you really want? Do you want time back? Do you want less headaches? Do you want to feel like your hair is not on fire all the time? Do you want a vacation place in South Carolina or in California or a Vancouver Island, where do you, I don't know where you want a place, you know, a cottage, a cabin. Do you want to drive a bigger boat to a nicer lake with a newer truck? Maybe that's what you want. I don't know, but we're never going to know unless you have a chance to talk it through. To say, hey, listen, I want to work less and I want to make more. That's exactly the conversation you have with me. There's almost nobody else, no other profession I can think of that you would go to and sit down and have a serious conversation that's 100% about you and what you want. And the expectation in that conversation is that you're 100% selfish about yourself. You don't have to think about anybody else, just you. Dom, I want more, more money for myself, more time off so I can enjoy it with my family, taking care of my parents, hanging out with my wife, hanging with my kids, hobbies working on my truck, working on my boat, working on my truck and my boat, working on the trailer that's going to tow my boat. I don't know what you want to work on. But those are your, your responsibility is to answer those questions. My responsibility is to ask those questions and listen carefully. And so the start of this whole thing is listening, asking good questions and listening. After that, we're going to agree or not agree. Whether and, and the agreement is whether we're a good fit together or not. You might really like listening to the podcast and think, geez, I could probably get along great with Dom and I think this would work. And then you get on a phone call with me and you think, uh, not so much. And I might get on that call with you and think, okay, well, this is great. We've got a podcast listener who's clearly invested in themselves, who's forward facing, who understands that there's something more in the future that they can finally change their business. And we get on the phone and I think, mm, not a good fit. And I have, you know, I have my own criteria and you have your criteria and both of us are business people and we get to make that decision. So we don't move forward until both of us decide to move forward. Fit is everything in a business coaching relationship because we're going to be working together really close. And by the way, I have a team of business coaches that work with me as well. And you can learn about them as we go on because I've got other programs coming up um, because we're getting so busy. So many people have decided that now is the time to take advantage. They're realizing that the world around them is changing a little bit and they need different answers to the same questions they've been frustrated by and struggling with for a long time. And so we do get a lot of phone calls here. And that's, again, why I'm having this episode specifically around how do I 10 times my results by reinventing the business instead of just staying where I am and feeling like I'm running in sand, right? So let me just go back. We listen and understand. We have to listen first. We have to ask great questions. 
then we get to a point where we both take a step back and under, agree whether there's a fit or not. And, you know, it's fine if there's no fit, we just go off on our merry way. But if there is, then we can continue talking. But I'll tell you what comes next is the talking gets much more focused. It moves from talking to action. And the very first thing that I want to walk you through and my team wants to show you is how to build your own strategic plan. Now, I'm not talking about a dusty business plan that sits on a shelf and never gets looked at. You know, it's beautifully bound. It's in a leather binder. It's printed on parchment that keeps straight from Egypt. None of that stuff. That doesn't count. That doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. What's relevant is a workable plan that we can put in place right now. It's a living, breathing, working document that actually becomes, I like to say this, it becomes our boss. Because during the strategic planning meeting, which by the way is four or five hour single meeting, it's intense. And in that meeting, we walk you through, what do you want this company to look like and your life in 10 years? 10 years. Now, granted, that's pretty fuzzy, but we know how to take you to that 10 year point and look around. Stand up, stretch your back, put your shoulders back and look at the horizon and go, wow, here I am 10 years from now. We have very specific coaching exercises that we use with high-performing executives. We're going to walk you through those. So you have a chance to talk about it, to think it through. What do you want your business to look like in 10 years? And once we do that, we're then going to bring you down to the three-year time horizon. You know, if this is what we want to accomplish in 10 years, what has to happen in the next three years? And that's a leap backwards, but it's an easier leap to make because you can start to get a little more focused. And so this strategic plan meeting, takes four or five hours because after that three-year time horizon, we take you down to a one-year time horizon, one year from the date. And that's where you set your goals. And this is where people say to me or my team, hey, we're doing one, 1. 1.2 million right now. I'd really like to grow. You know, I want to double it. So 1.2, 1.2, that means if they say they want to double it, they want to be 2.4. And you've heard many testimonials here of the people who've been with me for less than two years and have taken their million dollar business and made it a $3 million business. Well, you don't have to count on your fingers, my friends. That's more than double. And you might think, well, this guy's full of baloney. There's no way that can work. It certainly can't work for me. And he doesn't understand my market and he doesn't understand my customers. and He doesn't understand my crew and he doesn't understand my machinery. He doesn't understand my suppliers. That won't work for me. Okay, it won't. It's not gonna work for you. You're right, please don't call. If you believe there is one iota of a chance that your business could be doing a tiny bit better, then you owe it to yourself to have the discussion because I can show you how to get there. And then I will walk beside you, me and my team will walk beside you to show you how to get there. That's what the strategic plan is. The strategic plan becomes our, let's use our language, becomes our blueprints. It becomes our shop drawings. It becomes our elevation. It becomes our takeoffs. Once you have that, you can always look back on it. If I get hit by a bus three minutes after we're finished the strategic plan, you still have the strategic plan. And all you do is say, well, uh, Dom said this is what we have to do first. Dom and his team said this is what's next. So let's go do that next. Too bad that bus hit him. Do you have that plan right now? And if you don't, why not? Because the future that you're missing is not your own future. I'm going to lay some heavy stuff on you right now. The future you're missing is the legacy of your last name. The business you may or may not want to hand on to your kids, the business you may or may not want to hand on to your, you know, your foreman or your general manager or super, somebody else. This company can survive. You can reinvent this business, but you need time to do it. And we can show you how to do it. There's simple systems. There's processes. There is certainly hard ways of doing things, but Hard ways of doing things is how you got to where you are now. You've already proven that you can work harder than anybody else. You can outwork anybody else. You can work longer hours than anybody else. You can sacrifice your family and your health more than anybody else. You've already proven that. Now it's time to reap the benefits and say, okay, I got a bit of a head start. Now I can start to work smarter. I already figured out how to work harder. Nobody can argue that. Now it's my turn to work smarter. It's the schemers and dreamers that just think they want to work smarter and never get anything started. And I'm not talking about your brother-in-law, but thank you for bringing that up. The schemers and the dreamers, the get rich quick guys, they just want to think about it. They never take action. Whereas I can tell you this, you and I have never even met. 
Well, except for those of you listening who are already my clients, you've already been through this. You and I haven't even met, and I know you're a hardworking, ethical, smart, forward-facing person who's willing to put in the hard work, but you're just frustrated. Have you ever played video games with your kids? I'm not much of a video game player. I'm really not good at it at all. But my son got a new game the other day, and he wanted me to try it. And so I don't even know how the controller works. <laughs> so I take the controller, and of course, what's the first thing I do? I run into the wall. And then, and I don't know if you've ever seen this on a video game, but once you're facing the wall, unless you know how the controller works, you are just pretty much running into the wall. Yeah, you go left a little bit, right a little bit, and it's dumb looking. It just looks crazy. And so I just hand the controller back to my son. I'm like, buddy, I, this look, game looks great. Let me watch you play it. So I grab a coffee and watch him play. That's much more enjoyable. But if you feel like that video game character where you're just running into the wall as fast and as hard as you can, and maybe you move a little bit to the left, and maybe you move a little bit to the right, and maybe you get lucky and you hit some combination of buttons that makes you jump and do some karate kick. Wah! Okay, that's good. But is that you as a business owner right now? Just hitting the wall? So the strategic plan is there to show you how to break it into small component bits, just like a, a, a um, set of blueprints, just like a set of shops, shop drawings just like an elevation or a takeoff. That's what that's for. So we do the strategic plan. Remember, all of this started with just a conversation asking you what you really wanted. And our job as your coaches is to hold up a mirror of accountability and hold it in front of you every once in a while and say, hey, remember what boss man said when we did this original strategic plan? He said, or she said, this is what we have to accomplish. And then we all look back and go, yeah, that person was really smart back then, that big five hour meeting we had. Yeah, we should probably do that. And so we keep ourselves on task. So this segues now to what does coaching look like? How does business coaching really work? Does the business coach get in there and actually do the work for me? No. If you go to the gym and your trainer says, oh, and your goal with the trainer is, you know, I want a bigger chest. I want to really work on my arms. I want to have big guns because my wife likes it when I, you know, my t-shirt's a little tight in the arms. Your trainer will say, okay, well, you need to do more push-ups." But your trainer does not get on the ground and do a bunch of push-ups. That's your job. Sure, they'll show you a push-up and they'll dissect your push-ups and they'll rebuild your push-ups and they might even show you a push-up now and again. But they're not going to do the push-ups for you because the benefit does not accrue, does not go to you if they do the push-ups. It's the same in business coaching. We have simple systems. We have processes. We have shortcuts. You don't have to reinvent the wheel of what other people have already done. Myself and my team already have seen that many times over. And we're always curious and eager and learning to learn new and better ways to do that. And so that's what we do. And we'll show you those tips, those tricks, those hacks, those shortcuts, so you can do it yourself. And so here's how coaching works. I'm just going to, you know, we've done, let me take you back in time here. At some point, you decided to have a discussion to think about what the future of your business could be. So we get on a phone call. Then we have a, a, just a meeting where we listen and understand what you want. And then we all back away from each other and we think, is there a good fit here? And if there's a good fit, then we continue forward and we arrange a strategic planning meeting, four or five hours. Then once the strategic planning meeting is done, we start the coaching. Now the coaching happens a couple of different ways, but typically, I'm just going to do the broad brush. Typically, you meet with your coach every two weeks for one hour and you meet with your coach one-on-one. -on -one. Why one-on-one? -on -one? Because your business is a little bit different, is a little unique. You might be a roofing company just like the other guy across the street, but your situation's a little bit different. You might be a cabinet maker a little different than the guy across the street. Your situation is different, right? Your inputs are different. You're a family business. They're a solo owner. You're a partnership of a, a, a brother and a father, a son and a father. They're a family business as well, but it's two cousins. It's a little bit different. And that means there's a different order of operations is what we call it. Order of operations it has to be customized. That's important. But either way, the coaching happens once every two weeks. Why every two weeks? So you've got time in between to get things done. We're going to be talking about big, important, major things in your business. But our overall goal, if we all take a step back, is that over the course of a year, you make 52 very small changes in your business, incremental changes. They build on themselves right? 52, because there's 52 weeks in the year. So if you and your coach can work on one small change per week, every single week, imagine what your business will look like after a year, after two years, after three years. 
there's a saying on a, a church billboard at one of my favorite next to one of my, my favorite Starbucks's. I have a lot of favorite Starbucks's. Um, and this, you know, church has one of those billboards. It's always got a clever saying on it. A mind once expanded will never regain its original shape. A mind once expanded will never regain its original shape. Your kids are learning all the time. Your nieces and nephews are learning all the time, but they're looking to you for guidance. So what it means to be a business owner, it means to be a leader in the community. Are you learning? Are you growing? Are you showing them what it means to be a business leader, a community leader, a go-giver, a servant leader? And hey, maybe you don't want to, that's fine. But if you do want that, are you doing it? Right? Same with me, same with you. So in the coaching, what do we actually work on? Well, the agenda comes from the strategic plan because at the end of that big meeting, remember the big meeting, what's our 10-year plan? What's our three-year plan? What's our one-year plan? So it's moving from the general to the specific. We've got the 10-year time horizon, and then we squeeze that thing and out pops a three-year plan. And then we squeeze the three-year plan and out comes the one-year plan. Well, guess what? We squeeze it again. And you know what comes out of the one-year plan when we squeeze it? After having looked at what we need to accomplish in 10 years, after we narrow it down to three years, after we narrow it down to one year, what comes out of that is what do we need to do together as a team walking side by side, coach and client in the next three months. And that, my friend, is the magic of business coaching. We just break it down. We reduce it to the ridiculous. That's what it is. Oh, you mean in order to get this kind of success, all I have to do is put a system in place for that? Yes. Oh, do you mean to change the way my team operates is we have to get rid of the people who are cancerous and causing a lot of drama? Yeah, that's it. Now, there's a whole bunch of hows, and this is where the hints and the tips and the tricks come in, uh, and the hacks. How do you change a person who's cancerous inside of your company that's dragging everybody back? How do you change the type of jobs you go after? So we only go after the most profitable jobs that are lined up with how we do our work. All of those how is what we show you how to do, but we can't do that until we've got that big plan. What we're trying to do is pull you through the company, not push you through the company. We want to pull you through the company, not push you through the company. It's easier to be pulled. And then we are walking beside you to show you how to do it, to watch for the landmines, to tell you, here's the, the bridges. Stay away from that. That's a broken bridge. It's not going to work. Here's a system to use. Here's a system to test. Here's how we know we're on the right track. And so every two weeks, we come together to do that. And some of the different things we'll put in place is we're going to help you get a vision for the business. We're going to help you run this business on the values that you have as a business owner. Now, I know value sounds like Fruit Loops, and Cherry Cola and all that, you know, Fruit Fruit stuff. But I'll tell you what, the values of your business is why you and one of your most technically skilled people on your crew just have friction. I don't know why. They're the best at doing their job. And you know they're the best at doing their job, but there's something about them you don't like. And it's because your values are a little bit different. I'm not talking about my brother-in-law. I'm just saying in general, there are values differences out there. And you look at people and shake your head and think, how do you get through life? That's when your values have popped to the front of your mind and they're, they are the glasses you're looking through. They just have different glasses. They look at you and think, why is this guy so driven? Why is he or she always so focused on the future? Why is he or she always focused on making things better? Can't they just be happy with the way things are? But you're not. You're not. You want better. You want improvement. You want incremental changes. You want people around you to be happy. You want people around you to be paid. You want systems to work. You want customers to be happy. You want good customers coming through the door. And they want something else. Those values are important. So we have to get those values on the table. So we'll show you how to put those values in place in the company so that the people in your company start to understand it. And it just is what it is. Some people will understand it and they will stay. Some people won't understand it and they will leave. They will leave. They'll go. But they won't go unless you create a situation where they're no longer comfortable. If they're cozy and comfortable as a fox in the hen house, why would they ever leave? you got to let the fox know, not this hen house. Not this hen house. Anyways, we show you how to do all that. Let me get back to what we show you in coaching. How to gather data. How to gather the right data. 
Now, you might not be a numbers-based person, and that's totally cool, or you might love numbers, and you're just going to swim inside this. But there's some important numbers you need to know, and I'm not talking about, you're going to be surprised, I'm not talking about your balance sheet, and I'm not talking about your P&L. Those are great, but if you're sitting at your desk, your balance sheet and your P&L are way over on the right side of your desk, we might pull one or two numbers off of them. What I'm talking about are the operational numbers of the business. Like, how many leads did we get? How many bids did we do? You might call it bids, quotes, estimates, whatever, right? Of those, how many jobs did we win? Of those jobs, how many of those are profitable? Now it's into production. So it's really operational metrics. And the reason for that is I want you to be able to understand how to run this business if you were sitting on the beach in Hawaii. Or as I said earlier, when you're driving your new truck, towing a, a newer boat to a prettier lake, I want you to finally arrive at the cottage and pull up one document that says, oh, the company's doing fine today. I can see all the numbers. I can get out on the boat, take my kids fishing or water skiing or whatever we want, right? Or you can look at the entire list again and say, "Uh uh-oh, that number isn't right. It's too high or it's too low or it's weird. And then you can call back to the shop or the office or the crew and say, hey, tell me about this number. And you don't have to worry about the rest. Everything else is green. Everything else is good. That one number that's flashing red is flashing red. That's what you deal with. That, by the way, is why some business owners that you know or have read about in the newspaper or seen on TV, why some people can run multiple businesses and make it look easy, and other people can barely run one company and it looks impossible because you just have the right data in front of you. And it's not as dramatic as you think. It's actually even easier than the entire explanation I just gave you. So keep, keep, keep that in mind, right? But you got to have those numbers. So we look at things like your end of job report which is an autopsy on your old jobs, right? I called it the leprechaun report. If you ever read that article I did in Forbes magazine, I just want to say, what did we think we were going to spend? What did we actually make? Compare the two. And then there's a really important part at the end that wraps it all together, ties it together. You got to do that as well. We'll show you how to do that. Then we've got something called a dashboard. Dashboard is just as it sounds in your car. You can see all the gauges and you know where everything's at, right? Then in our coaching, we're going to show you how to make the most of your people. Because you can't do it all on your own. You've gotten to where you are now by your will and determination, but you can't do it on your own. You just can't. And so if it's time to have other people help you grow the business, we're going to show you how to 10x your business, 10 times your business by leveraging people, right? Remember, we want you to have a, a, uh, uh, a better business and a bigger boat. So you can drive to the lake, you have a better life or a legacy, right? And the T stands for truck or time or training or trajectory. That's what BLT is. Some of you have already seen that I have this this new coaching program called 10X BLT. Well, that's what the BLT stands for. For some people, it's all about having a bigger boat, towing it to a nicer lake and a newer truck. But for some other people, it's having a better business, more life and more time. But again, that goes back to that first conversation. You'll tell us what you want to see. You'll tell us what you want to see. Our job is then to show you how to build a pathway to get there by building a blueprint that we all agree to and that then becomes our boss, a strategic plan with coaching, how to get a vision that drives our business forward, that pulls us through the tough times how to have the data, the information we need and the end of job reports, the dashboard, how to have people to help us. And the people are there to run the process and the systems. Systems and process run the business. People run the process and systems. Please keep that in mind. And systems need to be dead simple, dead simple. If you ever look over the counter at a fast food place, they have a picture of what a burger looks like, how it's put together. Doesn't everybody know what goes into a Big Mac or a Uh, Wendy's, whatever, I guess they do, but you still look behind the counter and there's a picture showing the person making it. First, you put the bottom bun, then you put this, then you put that, then you put da 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 da. There's a pic that's a simple system for building a billion dollar company. It's built on simple systems, not complicated systems. Right. And then you've got to have some strategy for growing the business. We're the masters at growth strategy, marketing strategy, people strategy. And then we're also really, really good at showing you how to make that strategy come to life because it's one thing to talk about things. It's another to do it, right? Then we're going to show you how to execute on your plan. 
And you might be saying, you know what, Dom, all this sounds great, but you don't understand. I don't have any time left in the day. I can't possibly fit in one more thing and make it home in time for dinner. I'm done at the end of the day. Well, I get it. And so time management is actually a massive part of business coaching. It actually goes right back to that first conversation when we listen and understand. Remember, that was step one. What do you want? If you say to us, you want to work more and make, and make less, then we're never going to fit. Then fit's not going to happen. But if you say to us, look, I want to work below, I want to work less and make more, then we're looking across the table at each other thinking, okay, this person's a winner. We can work with this person. But you have to understand that your time is limited and will always be limited. And so we have to show you how to manage time. And we show you that by managing your priorities. Many of you listening, and thank you for doing this, have been on the past time management training calls I've done. And you would have heard me say there the same thing I'm saying right now. Time management is really about priority management. And if you're not sure about that, I want you to think about this upcoming weekend and the honeydew list somebody has planned for you. Your priorities are handed to you. So is your butt. <laughs> that your priorities are handed to you. And that's how your time is going to go. That's how your weekend will be spent. Priorities drive our time management. We'll show you how to do all that stuff, right? And then, of course, come back to team and people. That brings us back to money. That brings us back to the growth or the exit strategy you have in your business. It's a very simple and tightly wound system. And it's on rinse and repeat because we want to show you the rhythms of a business. We want to show you how things just happen. Here's an example, by the way. You know, the end of job report, which is one of the very first things that we're going to work with you on as your coaches is where you start to look at each job, job by job to make sure you're profitable. And I can tell you this, if you're profitable on a job by job basis, you'll be profitable at the end of the year. There's a couple of things to worry about, but really, as long as you're profitable job by job, you'll be profitable at the end of the year. Well, we don't do that with you once. We actually review an end of job report with you at least once a month so that you get into the rhythms of looking at them once a month with your business coach, right? Well, the other thing that we do every six months is something called a team at risk review. And now you're thinking, well, Dom, what's a team at risk review? Well, together with your coach, you're going to create a list of all of the employees in your company, including you, every single person. And next to that person's name, we're going to say their position title. And then next to that, we're going to say, are they at risk? Which means, do we think they're going to leave? And some of you are saying, I, oh, geez, I hope, I hope old Fred Flintstone does leave. Well, there's two ways somebody can leave. They want to go or you want them to go. But we need to put that on the list. Why? It's the mindset of the business owner. We always want to be in a proactive position. We want you to be prepared and never caught off guard. So let's just use Fred Flintstone as an example. Fred's one of your top guys, always been a top producer, but he started to date this Wilma character. He's starting to date Wilma and she lives 45 minutes away, maybe an hour away. And every weekend he goes over there and a couple of times now he's been late coming home. He's been late getting to work on Mondays because he was driving back from Wilma's place. Fred is at risk. Fred's a great employee and you love him, but Fred's at risk. I don't know that he's going to move over to where Wilma is. I don't know that Wilma's not going to move here. But what I do know is Fred is at risk and that's all I need to know. I just need to have my spidey senses tingling. Now you look down at the next name on the list and it's Barney. And you're like, Barney, I can't wait for Barney to leave. I wish Barney would quit. Barney's a bad dude. Barney's not a great contributor. Barney argues with people. I spent about an hour a day dealing with the shrapnel of Barney's comments to everybody else. Next to Barney's name, Barney's at risk because we want to get rid of him. He's just not the kind of person we can build a company around. And so when you do that team at risk review every six months with your business coach, guess what? Momentum, clarity, focus, the calm consistency of running a boring business. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to fire Barney, but Barney's got to change for the good of the company. And if Barney's not able to, then dot, dot, dot. And I don't have to say what I mean. Dot, dot, dot. And so there are rhythms that will help you put in place. And there's many other ones. On top of that, every quarter, every quarter means every three months, right? January, February, March, that's quarter one. April, May, June is quarter two. So we're going to use that, that language that you might have heard uh, in the media. 
The other rhythm we put in place is that every quarter we stop, we take a deep breath, we push ourselves back from the table, we stretch our shoulders back, take a sip of our coffee, and we look back at that original strategic plan. And we say, hey, what did the boss man say we needed to do in the next 10 years? And are we on track or are we off track? And once we look at that, we realize, hey, we're ahead here, and we're ahead here, we're a little bit behind here, and uh-oh, we got off track, way off track here. And guess what we do for the next three months? Course correct. Just like an airplane, you know, when an airplane leaves Seattle and it's flying to New York, it's not in a straight line the whole time. It's always course correcting. And furthermore, just like the strategic plan is a lot of work up front, you really, really, really want the airplane going at its full speed when it's on the, on the, the runway to take off. Same thing with us. But then it's constant course correction until it gets to New York. Constant course correction until it lands. It's the same thing with business coaching. Anyways, why don't we wrap up here? I hope you got a really good perspective on how business coaching works. Uh, I don't know everything about business coaching. I'm still learning. I've been doing it for 22 years now. I've used business coaching and the process I've just talked to you about on two of my own businesses. And I've sold both of those companies and done, you know, pretty good. Let's just say pretty good. So I'm not talking out of my, you know what. It works. It works if you use it. You know, there's a joke about weight loss and the treadmill. And some of you are going to laugh because I'm talking about your bedroom right now. But if you buy a treadmill and you put it in your bedroom and you use it every morning, as soon as you get up and you run a mile or 10 miles, doesn't matter, you're going to get fitter, healthier. You're going to lose weight. You're going to get toned and trimmed. But if you have that same treadmill and all you do is hang your clothes on it, you're not going to get the physical results you wanted. So is the treadmill to blame? And some of you are laughing right now. You're like, oh, buddy, I got to move that treadmill out of my bedroom because it's just really a place where we hang clothes. Business coaching works because strong leaders have always had wise counsel. Business leaders have always had wise counsel, and I want you to have that as well. Thank you very much for listening in. I really appreciate the fact that you do listen to the podcast and that you take the time to invest in yourself. I hope this gave you a sense of what other people are doing. And when you see those testimonials, when you, when you see like Ryan's video or Colin's video or Al's video, and you wonder, how did they do it? Just follow the system. We started by listening and understanding. Then we agreed that we were going to work together. There was a fit. And then we did a strategic plan. And then we just started with the coaching one step at a time. Anyways, I really hope that helped. And I look forward to talking to you. If you want to learn more about this, if you do, contact me. Um, actually, you can apply if you like. If, if the applications are open, you'll see the applications are open on this website. The website is go.10xblt.com forward slash welcome. So you just key that into the, your computer, go.10xblt.com forward slash welcome. So that's 10xblt.com. Or if that's too much for you to remember, you've heard me say this in the show a gajillion times, just shoot me a text. My cell number is 604-837-8361. And just uh, let's use the keyword 10X, the letters 10X. And then we'll take care of the details from there. But I am here to help. My team and I love what we do. And we can't wait to meet you. Thanks. Well, well, well. Do I thank myself in the outro? That seems a little bit... Yeah, we're not going to thank me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on today's episode to listen to how really to 10 times your results in this business. You want 10 times more of your own time back. You want 10 times more profits, 10 times more sales, a 10 times better team. As you heard me say, you're just not going to get there unless you aim for it. We have to have a goal. And I'm so glad you joined me here today to hear about how we break that apart and how we make that happen for you. Uh, it all starts with a uh, phone call. It all starts by reaching out if that's what you want to do or just sitting back and considering it. When is the right time for you to take that step, to meet with somebody who can guide you through that? And maybe your big takeaway here today is not business coaching, 
Maybe it's to go to the gym with a trainer. Maybe it's to go meet your religious leader and, and go down a spiritual path that you've been curious about for a long time. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you're going to take this. I don't know where it's going to go, but whatever is important to you is what I hope you take from this. That's why I'm here. I'm here to serve, right? Um, as you heard me say in the show as well, if you're interested in talking to us, my team and I, then just get in touch. It's super simple. I actually have a, a, a new website set up because we're getting so many requests. Uh, some from time to time we get busy and so the applications are closed, but if applications are open, then you can still see how to apply at this website. What you do is you go to go.10xblt.com forward slash welcome. If you see that applications are open, then we're open for applications. I, some, I Sometimes we just have to turn it off. We're kind of busy, uh, which is good. There are people knowing that now is the time to take action in their business. It's probably never been a better time when there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. When on one side, we're insanely busy. And on the other side, people are saying, uh, what does the future look like? Well, we're here to have that conversation. I've been having that conversation for over 20 years. Um, so just go to go.10xblt.com forward slash welcome. And 10 is spelled, you know, 10xblt.com. Uh, and if that's too much for you because you're walking the dog, then just text me. You guys have heard my number here lots. Uh, text me at 604. 837-8361. And then just leave the keyword 10X. 10X. And what I'll do is take care of all the details from there. So it's super easy. Anyways, thanks for checking in. The next segment is story time with Dom, or it's going to be questions and answers with Dom, which is what we're working towards, because I've got goals for this podcast as well. Things are going to change in the future. Stay tuned, folks. We'll see you there. Hey, Dom, uh, Brian Steinhardt from Waterfall Kitchens in Australia. Um, my question to you today is how to implement um, an office staff assistant, um, either by employing someone in-house or using somebody from overseas to be able to use them for some of the data collection. Um, so the example is, you know, we um, build kitchens and do kitchen renovations for people, and we're struggling to capture um, all the information on, you know, all the appliances for the job and being able to enter that into one spot um, to be able to help uh, streamline the, uh, the process with the clients. Hey everybody, welcome to Questions and Answers with Dom. Today we're gonna to be answering a question from Brian Steinhardt. Now, Brian is one of the members of the Contractor Strategy Group on Facebook. If you're not a member of that yet, that's one of the places you can submit questions for me to answer here on the podcast. Otherwise, if you wanna have us answer one of your questions, feel free to go to speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom and leave your question there. Uh, so just a moment ago, you heard Brian's question. So I wanna talk about this um, you know, the hiring of an assistant, uh, how to implement an office assistant. There's a couple of steps and I'm going to walk you through my plan. For those of you who are watching this as a video, there's a, a plan that I would put in place if I was either coaching you or doing this for myself. Uh, and it's going to take some little bit of organizing, but here's what I want you to do to start. And you might be surprised to hear me say this. The first thing I want you to do is leave the office. I want you to go to a coffee shop. I want you to buy yourself a coffee and then I want you to find a table and face the corner. I want you to put in your headphones so nobody's going to bug you. And then I want you to grab a blank piece of paper and a pen so you can start writing and thinking. Remember, working from the neck up is the most valuable work that we can do as a business owner, especially in the trades, because there's always people pulling at us. There's always uh, somebody asking us questions. We just need some quiet time to figure this out on paper. Once it's on paper, you own it. Once it's on paper, you can move it where you need to. But it, unless it's on paper, it's really hard to get a, uh, grab a hold of this. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to flowchart your process now. So what's the process that you've got inside the company? Um, you know, uh, Brian was saying, you know, we do kitchen renos and he's got problems getting appliance information back uh, so that he can build what he needs to build. By the way, very common problem in the cabinetry world because not all... Uh, ranges or stoves, not all dishwashers, not all fridges are built the same. 
uh, and they're not all the same size, believe it or not. They've got finished edges, they've got faces, they've got, you know, it's not standard information. So I understand his frustration. And now he's in the cabinetry space. It doesn't matter what construction or contracting or trade space you're in, you still have these challenges. Information back and forth with the customer is the basic premise here. So I want you to flowchart your process, but I want you to start with your marketing. Like how do you market to find customers? And then at the very bottom of your flowchart process is what's the end stage? What's the final perfect ending of a perfect customer? So the customer is super happy and leaves you a Google review or a Yelp review it might be your final stage. So what are you going to fill in between the bottom and the top or the top and the bottom? You need to have that all on paper. That might be one coffee meeting with yourself on its own, just writing that down. Now that you have that written down, you've got the information you need to ask yourself whether that's information into the company or out of the company at each of those stages. So then quickly just go and say, do I need information in or information out? Out is where I've got to ask them for something. Out is where I got to send them a message. In is where they've got to send me the dimensions of their uh, range or their range hood, or uh, they've got to send me pictures of their perfect pergola. Or if they have some tiles they want you to set because you're doing bathroom renovations, what are those tiles look like? They're just going to send you something and upload those files. Now you're ready again for the next stage. What you're going to do is you're going to take that flow chart, Brian, and I want you to question every single stage. Okay. Nobody said this wasn't going to be work, but Brian, you know what it's like, go get a coffee, take a picture of yourself having that coffee and I'll send you five bucks. Brian, bud, you've already done that. But if you send another picture of yourself having coffee, I'll send it back again. Uh, folks, that's a standing offer I make to everybody. I really want you to work on your business. I really want you to be the entrepreneur. I really want you to invest the time in doing this. And so just a little sidebar here. If you take a picture of yourself at a coffee shop, working on your business with a coffee in hand, you know, with your notebook in front of you, and then text that to me or email it to me or post it to the Facebook group, then I will send you five bucks as a way to buy that coffee for you. Uh, if you want to text it to me, you can always text me at 604-837-8361. But let's keep going, right? So now that you've got the flow chart, now that on that flow chart, you've marked off whether you need information in or information going out, now you're going to question it. At each stage, do I need people for that stage or do I need technology? Now, Brian, you asked a question about hiring a, an overseas contractor. And here I am talking about the flowchart because we don't know if we need a person yet or if we need a system that's brought on by technology, right? Now, if you need a person to do that stage, that's fine. But I wonder if there's a way for you to use technology. And I'll bet you there is. Now, you don't have to sign up for a new software. There's ways to do things on the cheap. I am the king, by the way, of bootstrapping a business. All of the businesses I have built have started with zero money and just me out there selling, probably a lot like you guys. And as I've moved on, I've, I've started to then invest more in systems and processes. So um, if you're a fan of Google and all of the Google tools on Google Drive, you can get Google Sheets. It's free. It's a way to send a form to somebody or, and there's Google Forms. You can send a form to somebody. You can send a sheet to somebody. You can send a survey to somebody and they can answer that or they can upload a file, or they can upload a drawing, and they can send that back to you. Now that we've got that way for that uh, information to flow back and forth, you can have a person who's responsible for making sure that's sent to the Smith, or the Hernandez, or the Chan, or the McLeod family, and then it's sent, and then it's received back. And Brian, this is where we get to your um, assistant. We'll come, to there. we'll come there in a second. Now I want you to ask yourself, how do we gather the information now? Is it information we actually need? Are we getting information in the right form or format. And if you're not, think about on your flowchart how you want it ideally. Then ask yourself, is there a better way to do that? Now, you might not know, and that's okay. But, you know, on this show and on other shows before, you've heard me talk about Christopher Manessis. Chris is my tech guy, and he's a whiz at something called Zapier. Z-A-P-I-E-R. Zapier is a tool. It's like an, it's an app. And what it does is it helps two softwares that aren't supposed to talk to each other, talk to each other. So if you can say to Zapier, if Google Forms is populated by a client, update info to my Google Drive folder. And there, if you just go look at Zapier.com, you'll see all of the different recipes. They're called recipes. But as I said, there's Google Forms and there's different software. You might just want to go buy a certain software to make this happen. But again, if you're bootstrapping, if you're trying to make do with very little, figure out how to do it in its most basic form and you can get better later. Now, we need a reminder system. 
we need a reminder that says to the customer, hey, uh, we need those instructions or we sorry, we need the specifications on the range or on the fridge or on the dishwasher, whatever it is. So go back to your flowchart. Is there a place there where you need that information from the customer? Is there a way to get it earlier? Is there an automatic reminder system that you can set with them? There are automated ways to do that so that you don't actually have to pay for a person. Or if you still want to use a person, you can use that person on a fractional basis, which means you don't need to hire them for eight hours. The days of hiring an admin assistant for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week are gone. You don't need to do that anymore. Now, you may work yourself back up to that level. That's fine. But you can get an assistant for an hour a week. You're going to have to train that person and you're going to have to and you're going to have to make sure they do their job. But you don't need them for a full day. You don't need them even sitting in your office. You can do all of this if your office is mobile, if you're in a truck and, and they're in a different country or a different part of the, of the, of the country altogether. So ask yourself, do I have a people problem or do I have a process problem? Um, if you want to go hire a contractor now that you've figured all this out, where your inputs are, where your outputs are, then I like to go and hire people from something called upwork.com. So that's U-P-W-O-R-K.com. Upwork is a great, uh, it's like a clearinghouse for contractors, people that are admin assistants, people that are really good with bookkeeping, people that are really good with art, uh, people that are really good at uh, producing things for you. You can find people who will 3D render drawings for you. You can find people that will help you with purchasing, right? all sorts of things. There's all sorts of contractors on there. And you can hire them for an hour or 40 hours, whatever you need to. Now, I'd suggest you hire somebody who you can train, Brian, and that you can show what you need done when. So, for instance, you could say, look, but every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I need you to go to this form on my Google Drive. I need you to see the open accounts who hasn't sent us back the dimensions for their dishwashers. And I need you to send them a message. And the message is going to have a link in it back to the Google Forms that says, please, you know, upload your, your documents here. If they still haven't given us the specifications after two weeks, then can you send them an email and then send them a text message? All of that can be automated, but you can now use an assistant for just a couple hours a day, a couple hours a day or a couple hours a week without having to pay for them for 40 hours uh, and house them in your office, etc. So does that help? I know it sounds a little bit convoluted because you asked a question about you know, how do I hire maybe an overseas person or, a, a, you know, a contract uh, administrator? And I started with the business operations flowchart, but that's really where it comes back to. We have to identify if we're solving the right problem in the right place. Brian, thank you very much for asking the question. I appreciate it. If you have a question, go to speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom and leave your question there. Thanks.